What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Switch. Our topic today is National Dex with the question accompanying it being what does the lack of a National Dex in Generation 7 mean for future games? So if you weren't aware, which I'm sure most of you are, Sun and Moon as well as Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were the first games to not feature a National Dex since it was introduced at least in Generation 3. Previously every game, as I mentioned, Generation 1 didn't have it, Generation 2 had like the new Pokedex and the old Pokedex, i.e. Kanto, so National Dex Order, or the new Johto Pokedex basically. Uh, but since then, since Home came around, we've had it every single game, up until Sun and Moon. So. It's just the regional decks. We just have the Alolan Pokedex. So, what does that mean? Well, the regional Pokedex generally contain every Pokemon in the region. So, the Hoenn Pokedex contains every Pokemon you can find or obtain in the Hoenn region, either in, for example, Ruby or Sapphire. If you combine them, you can get them all. Uh, the National Dex, whereas you know, the National Dex contains every single Pokemon ever, from Bulbasaur down to Zoroar. As of Alola. The National Dex has now been taken out of the game and has been relegated to Pokemon Bank, so it's still available in some format. If you update Pokemon Bank to work with Sun and Moon, you can then access the National Dex on that application on your 3DS and it can it basically combines all of your games you register to it, so it takes X and Y, it takes Auras, it takes Sun and Moon, obviously Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon now, combines the Pokedex of all those games together and then just fills in the National Dex there. So of course, for example, on Pokemon Y, I have finished the National Dex, which means my Pokemon Bank Dex is completely full, just will be forever. Uh, you obviously can also check some of the stats of those games and whatnot, but the National Dex is on Pokemon Bank. So you can still view details, so you can view like the height and such, tells you the type, um, and any entries they have for each of the games. So you can, if, if Charmander's there, you can say, okay, what's Charmander's entries for X? I want for Y, if, if you've got those in those games, for example. However, if they're not in the game, so for example, um, in Sun and Moon, Charmander is not in the alone decks, he doesn't get an entry, he just gets the details, like you know, five foot or whatever. Well, not five foot, but you guys get the idea. So why have they done this? Well, with increasing po numbers of Pokemon, the National Dex does increase in size every single generation. Of course, we had 151, 251, 386, 493, 649, um, 721, and now 807, I think. Uh, so it increases with each generation as you'd expect, and we're nearing a thousand. So I'd say by the time we get to generation 9, maybe generation 10, depending how it goes, we'll have hit a thousand Pokemon. So could they be trying to save memory? You know, obviously with every Pokemon, you have to have an entry in the National Dex and some text that just describes the Pokemon. So could they be trying to save some memory in that? case there? Probably not. If you compare like, you know, two sentences on a Pokemon to a full 3D model, which of course has to be in the game, it's not really too much extra memory. Uh, and of course, looking at Pokemon Switch, particularly the memory cards are huge. Uh, anyway, so that shouldn't really be a problem. Could they be trying to save time? Because obviously if you've got 800 Pokemon, you have to write a National Dex entry for every single one of them. That's a bit of extra time and you know money, basically, they have to spend. Well, not really, because they've always reused entries from older games. So when, you know, say, um, Trico was introduced in Ruby and Sapphire, he had two entries for those games. When Auras was remade, those entries were basically reused. There are sometimes slight adjustments in terms of wording, uh, but generally the same information is conveyed. So there's not that much extra effort to actually have to just pull those dex entries across, and if they were really feeling lazy, they could just reuse them straight up. So this is likely Game Freak's way of dealing with what I'm calling and what I'm denoting the Pokedex problem. So what is the Pokedex problem? Well, People have often mentioned, often talked about, as I mentioned just now, we'll be soon hitting a thousand Pokemon over the next few generations. People always talk about this, how there are more and more Pokemon. If you ask someone who has only played the first couple of generations, they will say, well, I don't know any Pokemon from generation six or generation seven, there's too many, etc. Um, and it's just sort of a thing that's happening with Pokemon now. If you're not up to date with it, you, you're just under the fact that there are far too many Pokemon. And what it does is it makes the gotta catch them all tagline just a bit sort of, you know, funny. Oh yeah, gotta catch them all. There's 800. Oh, I, I don't think I can catch them all now. If it was just 100, sure, but this one, it's a bit of a task. So how does Game Freak approach this problem and fix it? Well, one of them is they add more and more Pokemon 
until it becomes a complete joke, as it sort of is for those that don't play them. But imagine if they added 150 Pokemon for Generation 6 and 150 for Generation 7 as we sort of wanted, we'd be up to a thousand now, and it might be to the point where people, even the ones keeping up with the games, are saying, we have too many Pokemon. And of course, looking into the future, a thousand plus is already pretty ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to argue against it, but it is a lot. And of course, looking in the future still, are they going to keep adding more and more until we have 2,000 Pokemon and then 3,000? And where does it stop? Of course, that's their, their other option is stop adding new Pokemon. However, that will pretty much kill the franchise. If you stop adding new Pokemon, you can't re-release. You know, if they add a new Pokemon Generation 7, they can't have Summer Moon. So what do they do? They could have a new region with old Pokemon. That would sort of work, but then there'd be no story you could really you know, weave in. There'd be no mystery, no sort of new experiences. Um, which is a big thing, a big setting point of the franchise. So I think them stopping any Pokemon is far out of the realm of possibility, at least for the moment. So how did they do it? Well, they basically removed the way to view all these Pokemon. What they've done by not having a national dex in Sun and Moon is, if you don't know, if, if a new player comes in and isn't quite sure of previous Pokemon, they know the 300, 400 Pokemon that are in the Alola region. That's it, they just know 300, 400, and that seems pretty, you know, standard, like, yeah, I can catch those. They didn't know these 400 more just in the background that we don't actually know about. Of course, if you are, you know, a constant player, of course you do know, but newer players don't, and that doesn't really, it, it doesn't overwhelm them with the fact that there are lots and lots of Pokemon now. So, one thing to look at with this is the regional dexes, because, of course, if we've only got the regional dex in the game, how does that work? How does that sort of figure out, fall out, and actually work in some senses. Well, the thing we can look at is we can look at the regional deck size by region. So you can see here, here is the regional deck size for each game, or for each region I should say, uh, over time. So of course the blue column is the original one of that deck, so the Kanto decks, the new decks, the Johto decks, the Hone decks, the Sinner decks, the Nova decks, the Kalos decks, and the Alola decks. I'm not including remakes in this just because that, it, you know, it's a different sort of story there. But you can see here, the orange ones are the updated version of those Pokedexes. So in Platinum, you got an updated Sinner decks. In Black 2, White 2, you got an updated Unova decks. And then obviously it's an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you got an updated Alola decks. And it's worth including these because these do add, you know, about 100 Pokemon a time on uh, to increase the size drastically. But you can see over time, the regional dexes are getting larger, and that's very apparent to see on Kalos. Kalos is probably a little bit of a um, sort of a outlier because of the fact that it was huge and there were so many Pokemon in it. But Alola, looking at it still, you know, the standard Alola dex is basically the same size as the updated Unova dex, with the updated Alola dex being a hundred Pokemon larger again, which means over time the regional dexes are getting larger, whereas the national dex is over there, being, you know, also it's getting larger as well but the regional dexes themselves are getting larger. So what does that mean? Well, with a larger regional dex, the goal of the game generally becomes to complete that. Looking at Kalos, Kalos is again a bit of an outlier, but in X and Y, if you completed the Kalos dex, you got the Oval Charm. If you completed the Dashiell dex, you got the Shiny Charm. Now, in the Alolan games, you get the Shiny Charm for just completing the Alolan dex, which means that the final goal of the game, because really the shiny charm is the final goal of the game, the final goal of the game is rather than doing the national decks, it's now doing the regional decks. So it seems like that's going to be the constant challenge from now on. So we might get larger regional decks as opposed to having to complete the larger national decks. So the regional decks becomes the end game sort of item, and the rest of the Pokemon that aren't included are just sort of around. You can get them if you want, but it's not the main goal of the game. However, having a bigger regional dex doesn't necessarily mean there are more Pokemon available, and also the fact that we just need to look at the generate the percentage of national decks available over the generations. You can see, of course, Gen 1 and Gen 2, it's basically 100%. For this, I'm not including event Pokemon, so we can ignore like Mew, Celebi, etc., because they are basically only are available for events. I'm not including stuff like the Dream Radar in Generation 5 or the Dream World because those are sort of time specific events and, and stuff like that. But you can see over time, especially going to Generation 7 now, there are less, there's a sm smaller percentage of National Decks available in this generation. Now, it's worth mentioning again, Generation 6 is an outlier. There are lots of Pokemon available in Generation 6, as you can see, 100% actually. Um, but that's because we had Kalos and we also had Hoenn again. So there were two regions mixed up in it, whereas in Generation 7, you've got a single region with an expanded version, just slightly more Pokemon on top. 
But even then, you can see there are less, you know, less lower percentage in Astrodex in Alola or in Generation 7 than there was in Generation 5. Now, this sort of makes sense because there are is a larger DEX, um, and of course, unless you've got a larger region to account for that, you're not going to be able to make it happen. But it looks like over time, we might see that the percentage gets smaller and smaller as the DEX gets larger and larger. For example, Generation 7 has 184 Pokemon that you cannot get over the generation at all. And a lot of these Pokemon are just sort of standard Pokemon. Looking at Generation 5, a lot of them were legendaries because you couldn't get you know, Groudon, for example, very easily. Or you can get Rayquaza because uh, you just had Unova. In Generation 7, you can get those legendaries, except there are just then standard Pokemon that are being forgotten about and are unavailable in the games. For example, Lunatone and Solrock, you can't get them if you know the Sun and Moon, but we'll ignore that. Uh, so basically, the downward trend is that we're going to be able to get less and less Pokemon of the total in each generation, which makes sense. So what's the goal of, you know, what's Game Freak's goal with all of this? Well, the, the proposed goal, I would say, is that Game Freak is aiming to make larger regional DEXs, as we have seen, and having that being the final goal of the game, um, and have the national DEX being sort of hidden away. With more and more Pokemon, eventually some of them are going to be unavailable in generations entirely. As I mentioned, there's 184 of it unavailable in generation 7. Some of those might get be might be available in generation uh, 8. However, some might not at all, in which case there'll be two generations where you just can't get them at all. However, it's not a huge issue because if, if I really want to use a Lunatone, I can use Pokemon Bank to transfer the Lunatone up from generation 7, or generation 6 rather, to generation 7 game, and I can use it in, in the game anyway. The people that it punishes really are the people that don't want to spend five dollars is it five dollars or something like that a year on Pokemon Bank and also the fact that Pokemon Bank refreshes or gets rid of all your Pokemon if your subscription runs out the details on that are a bit hazy but people have lost their Pokemon so if you've got Pokemon and Pokemon Bank just make sure you keep that subscription going um not an ad but however it, you know is this the reason for them to remove the national decks not really I mean you can still have it in the game um, but just have it hidden away. You have to complete the regional decks first before you even get to see the national decks and they can be like, boom, there's 400 more. Or maybe have it hidden away. You have to, you know, find some obscure um, person to actually sh allow you to, you know, show you the national decks. Maybe something like that, but there's no reason to remove it from the game. Um, you can keep it in there because it's not going to add much memory. You still have to have the models. Um, there's really not much to it there. But even if you don't, at least keep the numbers visible in Sun and Moon or Sun and Moon. If you get a Charmander, you can't see what number it is. Usually that number would be the Alolan Pokedex number. But of course, because it's not the Alolan Pokedex, it doesn't get a number, which means Charmander just has no number at all in Sun and Moon. Of course, it does have a number still in the background, because of course that's how they manage you know, memory and all that stuff like that. So it's got to be in there somewhere, we just can't see it manually. Which is annoying when you're trying to make a sort of... You know, living Pokedex in, in game, which is just a bit fuzzy there. So that's sort of where I get to. It would seem in future games we are possibly going to get Pokedexes very similar to the Kalos Pokedex, i.e. you have Coastal Kalos, Central Kalos and then Mountain Kalos, which are literally Pokedexes on their own, or similar to the Alola Pokedex where you have sub Pokedexes for each island, but of course there is some overlap, whereas Kalos was sort of segregated and there were no there's no overlap at all you're probably gonna get some overlap because that just makes more sense and it's easier to design sort of common pokemon and such hence that's the reason why Kalos has so many pokemon available on it um but it just seems like that's what we're going down larger regional dexes possibly split into different sections uh, that again are large themselves so bigger variation in single games but overall in terms of generation not a huge variation itself with pokemon bank being the overarching sort of constant in all of this where you can bring your Pokemon up from generation 5 all the way up to well, this point generation 3 all the way up to generation uh, 6, 7 and then 8 if we assume they release a Pokemon Bank application for the Switch. So it's going to be the lifeblood basically for the future. But that is going to be it for us today so do let me know down below in the comment section what you think of the National Deck removal. Is it not really bothering you and you're not too well because you can see it on Bank anyway? Or would you prefer it to be in the game regardless? Just there's no reason for them to remove it. Um, or are you just not bothered either way really? You're more happy with the focused regional Pokedexes now that we've got like you know, almost a thousand Pokemon. You're going to have to do it. It's like a compromise. Do let me know down below in the comment section. And also do let me know about what you think for the next video's topic which is going to be Z moves or Z moves. Will Z-moves be present in future games? How could they be handled? 
And because of course Zemus are native to Alola, they're like an Alola tradition, so how does that work when we get a new region? Is it very similar to Mega Evolution where at the end of the game you just get given uh, your Z ring and Z crystals? Or are they just not in the game at all? Do let me know your thoughts on how you'd like that to be taken over into future gener generations. But for me, for now, it'll be f <laughs> for now, this is it for me for today. There we are. I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, my friends.